Hello, and welcome back to Twisted Veil, a Through the Breach campaign presented by Ink and Liar. Before we get into all the fun, exciting character development tonight, we have announcements. So, Deanna, do your thing. We have so many announcements. I don't... Okay, so there's somebody with us tonight who will be doing much more exciting things, or... What I do is, of course, exciting, but like a novelty for tonight that we're very excited about. But I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to have my regular shout spot and then we'll get to her and it'll all be a great time. Just we're all in a really, really good mood. All right. So shout outs. We got to give a shout out to our partner. Hopefully you recognize this name by this point. They are beautiful, amazing and wonderful. Nine Realms Gaming. They create top notch gaming accessories from the finest woods this realm has to offer. By gaming accessories, we mean stuff like dice vaults, dice towers, dice trays, hero vaults, and that kind of beautiful wooden totem uh, you can visit their website now ninerealmsgaming.com and use our exclusive partner code at liar10 l-y-r-e-10 to get 10% off at ninerealmsgaming.com all right sound stuff ear hole stuff the things that will be audio wafting gently through your brain this evening other than me shouting uh we've got to give a shout out to tabletop audio that's tabletopaudio.com for the ambiance and music in this episode tonight um we're using a I, I believe we're using it mainly while we are in the theater. Uh, the audio at Tabletop Audio is amazing and completely free to use in your own games, but you can also consider supporting Tim on Patreon so he can continue to make amazing sound sets. Uh, we at Ink and Liar currently support him, and we encourage you to do the same. We're putting the link to his website, tabletopaudio.com, in, in the chat if you want to check out more of that. All right, also want to shout out Sirenscape for the ambient sound, music, and their online player that we are using on stream. Uh, I also want to shout out Ounces Music, who's a musical artist who's responsible for most of our soundtrack. If you like his stuff or you want to just hear how awesome any of his other stuff is, you can check him out on Bandcamp, Twitter, Instagram, or SoundCloud. That's Ounces Music. All right, I believe that's all the audio. Yes. All right. Socially, you can subscribe to us on YouTube to catch up on all of our shows. That's Command YouTube. Or you can join us on Discord, which is free and a great place to hang out. Uh, you can come chat with our community and cast members if you like. There are links to our Discord in the About tab on our Twitch profile, or you can pull it up by using the command Discord. <laughs> You can follow us on social media. You can use command socials to check out Ink and Liar on all of our social channels. Or if you want to follow the cast, maybe someone who yells, maybe some of the more calm people around me, you can use exclamation point twisted cast, command twisted cast, and you can follow our entire cast. Uh, you can also use, if you watch our streams, you rack up channel points. You can contribute those scrolls, we call them scrolls instead of channel points, to our community challenge so that we can bring a snock tarot card from our Fates End show into the world. Uh, we're getting there slowly, but we're getting there. We've made a lot of progress on our goal to 800,000 points. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Okay, 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 okay. I think I've, okay, yes. <sighs> We've gotten to the point where I can get into the, the, the stuff that you don't hear every week, which is, of course, very near and dear to our hearts, and I love shouting it out, but I, I was getting to the part that I'm super pumped about. Uh, we have to take a moment to talk about our followers for a second. Uh, last Tuesday, so if you joined us last week, you would have been here with our 732 Twitch followers. As of today, or at least when Lauren updated this document at 3 p.m., we are at 1,200 followers. Uh, for a week? Yes. <laughs> for a week's worth of progress, that is crazy amazing. It's an awesome junk. Uh, junk. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> you can see I'm a little bit manic right now. I'm just very happy. Uh, this is thanks to Weird Games. Yes the people who design our system, the people who design Malifaux. Uh, we've been listed as a content creator on their Malifaux core box giveaway that they are running right now. Um, so we are playing a Through the Breach campaign, which is designed by Weird and exists within the world of Malifaux. That is that is their, their brain baby. Um, so we are going to put a link to their giveaway in the chat so that you can enter that. They're giving away some awesome stuff. But not only that, and the reason why we have somebody with us today, I don't know if you can see her already or not, but she's here in my heart. Um, they have sent us a box of goodies. Uh, Lauren will be unboxing those goodies in just a moment. Uh, we plan to give away the items they sent us during our loot weeks, which is already, so next Tuesday will be the first time that we're, we're giving this stuff away because it's the first 
first week of every month we have our loot week um we give away awesome goodies during every single one of our shows uh we cannot express how thankful <laughs> enough we are for all the love that weird has sent our way if you're interested in checking them out you can use the command weird w y r d in chat and you can check out uh through the breach which is their tabletop system the one we're using their miniatures their fate decks their tabletop war game it's really really awesome stuff and you should definitely check them out uh and we want to thank weird again for listing us as a content creator and for creating the world and for creating the system we love you all very much and we're super <coughs> pumped um let's see okay 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 so now i think i have an official thing to say about the unboxing where i actually have to to read it delivery from weird we are about to do a quick live unboxing with lauren weird games was nice enough to send us a box of goodies and we want to shout them out and tell them thank you for sending this to us uh we also want to thank them for creating the awesome setting and system and everything uh you can play through the breach as well if you visit www.weirdgames.net it's weird and games have a little dash between them if you put command weird that'll come up everything we pull out of this box we're going to be giving away on our stream so make sure to follow us here on twitch we do giveaways on all our shows the first week of every month i think i'm done hyperventilating and i think i'll pass this to lauren <laughs> if that's right <laughs> greetings yes? from the other <laughs> side of the wall <laughs> Yes, I've unveiled myself. Ah, yes, the box. I have it here. Still intact with all the packing peanuts. Look at that. Let's see what we got in here. I'm super excited. Just throw Mythic Odyssey of Theros on the floor over here so I can get, so I can get to the goods. Ooh! A... Through the Breach, multi-part kit, female. Check that out. Oh, oh, she's got like an umbrella. Oh, that's super awesome. Can y'all see that? Look at it, love it. Oh, that's a gorgeous mini. That's a gorgeous so mini. Somebody, that's, this is gonna, this is gonna go to somebody's Through the Breach game and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All their miniatures are beautiful. I think you can swap out, like, the different things, too. There's one with a chainsaw. Yes! Chainsaw! Alright, what else? Ooh, we got a fate deck! Explorer Society fate deck. We've given away one of y'all's fate decks before, so we're very excited to give away it some more. Into the peanuts I go. Days without an accident. Penny Dreadful. I think this is what Zach was talking about. Yeah, the, campaign the campaign book. book. Mm-hmm. Penny Dreadful. Manufacturing lies. Very cool. Okay, I have to look that up immediately. I love the artwork. Just a moment. I just love the creepy artwork of everything. And last but not least... Through the breach from nightmares. Yes. I just love, oh, I love the artwork. Book. Yeah, that's the <laughs> no, smiley. Guy. Yeah, that's the. Copy. I'm sorry, my <laughs> the smiley guy. We are. We've already met him. I forget what he called himself, but like, yes, we've already met him. <laughs> Creepy smiley man, <laughs> and a woman with a dark smile. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Weird Games. I guess I will disappear back into the ether now. Go Take it away, home. Brent. <laughs> <laughs> um, claws. Yes, I do love claws. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, that's exciting. I was gonna rob you if English Ivan was in there. I was. I was gonna. I was gonna come down there and attack you. Um, yeah. I'm gonna focus. I'm distracted with shiny toys, like a like a cat with a laser pin. Well, let's get into tonight's episode. Uh, sit back, relax. It's going to be a little more chill, some good character development, and uh, let's get into our episode of Twisted Veil. Vale.
All right, uh, let's do those warnings real quick, then, Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a wall of text, and I went, I can't possibly read all of this, but We're I We're all distracted. Shiny this objects. This is important. This is important. Shiny this objects. Is important. <laughs> right. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. I have one last thing to yell about, and this is super important, and I don't want to skip over it. Viewer discretion is advised. Twisted Veil is intended for mature audiences and can engage with potentially triggering themes. If anything that I list out here sounds like, oh, I'm not in the headspace for this tonight, or this isn't something that I feel comfortable engaging with. You and your mental health come first. Mental health is very important to all of us here at Ink and Liar, and we want to make sure that you're comfortable, you have the support that you need. We'll see you later. We love you. Right. Okay. So potential triggers for tonight include violence, gore, drug use, adult themes, adult language, sickness, horror, gaslighting, and various phobias. I don't, yes, I believe that that's everything. Um, additionally, Through the Breach takes place partially in the real world and is set in 1902. So Twisted Veil acknowledges the traumatic events that happened during that time, and in an effort not to erase this, it may come up in game. Lots of terrible things were happening in 1902, and we are not pretending that they didn't, essentially. All right, I believe that's everything that I have to warn for, and I'm going to hand it back to Brent. Perfect. Far within the Badlands, back in the town of Innocence, the door to a shop creaks open. A pair of snakeskin boots step in, glistening silver spurs clinking on their heels. Pushing back a deep brown poncho, the owner of said boots lights up a cigarette, smiles, and approaches the counter. Hello, friend. I'm looking to pick up some gifts for some friends of mine who rolled through town a few days back. The shopkeep scratches his head in confusion. Gifts? Have you tried the general store? <laughs> With a hearty laugh, the stranger takes a deep drag of tobacco. He lifts up his wide brimmed Amish style hat and smiles. Nah, friend, these folks are special. What I need, I can't buy from no general store. The shopkeep frowns and gestures to the sign in the window. But, sir, I'm the undertaker. Exactly. That's why I'm going to need five of your finest coffins. <laughs> the man face palms and chuckles. Hot damn, I forgot. Make that four coffins. Jimmy likes to bring his own. Our scene shifts back to the Star Theater. After a few heart-filled goodbyes and the exchange of gifts, the party headed back to the city of Malifaux, where they attended a night at the Star Theater. After experiencing an amazing display and dining on some sophisticated French cuisine, they managed to capture the Golden Rose and win themselves an evening with a performer of their choice. So. As I switch the music to something less foreboding, um, 
it is the end of the show. There is a rapture of applause. People are standing up. The performers are coming out bowing. Uh, all of the mechanical doves are still fluttering about. Uh, the top of the star canopy fireworks sort of descending down and, and the sparks uh, dissipating before they can actually burn anyone and hit the crowd. And the floor is yours as you guys get to decide which performer you would like to uh, hang out with. Ah! Toby, I don't know what to do with this really here. Take it. Uh, we, we, we got it? I didn't think we would get it. Hey! Of course we got it. You helped, Tobias. I mean, yeah, I pointed it out, but okay. Uh, oh, now we, now, we, now we got a decision to make. Hey, hey Ellie, we, we, we got this for you. You want to have a date with that, uh, that Lily of the Valley? Who, the serving lady? The serving lady. Sure, but I, I mean, there's probably somebody better that we can talk to. Well, there's that, uh, all right, who are you guys thinking? There's the, uh, the, the head, of, head of the house here, Colette Dubois. You guys thinking, thinking of her? I bet she'd have a few interesting stories. What do you think, Fred? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, 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 sure. Mm-hmm. You sure you don't want to talk to the Lily, Frey? All right. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, Maeve is going to turn to the uh, the gentleman that was sitting beside them and say, um, Eddie. Before you can speak, Eddie is already grabbing your shoulders and shaking you violently with excitement. Uh, my word! Meave, dear, you got it! You got it! Think of the adventure that awaits! The verbal sparring you shall experience with a true creative thespian! All right, all right, turn it down, Eddie. You're coming with us. <gasps> I, I am underdressed for such a memorous occasion. I will need to stop by the restroom and put on a... Well, <laughs> I mean, put on my dining face, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Uh, and Meave just kind of looks at him and looks at everyone and goes, Everyone, this is my best friend, Eddie. Pleasure, a pleasure. Any friend of Meave's is a friend of mine. Put it there, old chaps. Come on, shake away. Pleasure, name's Frey. Name's Frey. Frey the Lodge. Frey the Intimidating. I'm sure you have quite a few historic tales of your own, yes? Uh, yeah, I got a few stories I can tell. Well, maybe one day over a rugged campfire, you can tell me them, and I can read you the latest and greatest of the good Mr. Van. That sounds mighty wonderful. The one you failed at giving a rose to over there is Nemo. Hello, Nemo. Equally pleasure. I do love what you've done with your hair. And um, that's Tobias. <clears throat> Greetings, yeah. good sir. Eddie, it's a, it's a pleasure to meet you. He's gonna shake his hand, but N Nemo, you uh, you, you didn't get the you, you got the rose from him, and uh, oh, I, I I see, I see. And um, this this is this is Ellie. Hey, which Vern are you talking about? What book? Jules Vern, of course. His latest and greatest, you know, around the world in X amount of days, journey to the center of the earth. My, my dear, you look absolutely dreadful. A bit here, here, and he pulls a silken handkerchief from his, his vest. It's like, it, oh, are you feeling feverish? Sweat beating on your head. Is it something you ate? Uh, French food doesn't always agree with people I know, especially those out of town. You didn't have the escargot, did you? No, They're snails. Know. I take the, the handkerchief and sort of dab my head. Thanks. Yeah. Keep it. Keep it. A gift. A gift. Well, this is exciting. Should we Eddie, go in? What did you mean by changing your face? Oh, well, I just want to make sure I look the fun. He looks around. He leans over to me. I, I mean, they're cool, right? Like, are they on the level? Um... They'll be fine. You go change your face, and I'll uh, I'll get them up to speed. Uh, Meave says that very quietly, but 
Oh, don't worry about it. I promise you'll look fabulous next time I come back. I'm thinking, and he's like holding his coat, maybe something a little bit more blue to match the performers in the story night. Uh, toodaloo! And he uh, trounces off. While, while he does that, Ellie's going to go lean towards Nemo and go, I mean, I don't look that bad, do I? Like, is, it, is there something up with the face? Actively smell, Ellie. You refuse to take a shower before we go. Okay. Here. Yeah, and that smells good. Right? What? Like it's a good must. Are you trying to produce pheromones? What are you talking about? No, I just wanted to check. He gave me a... Okay, anyway, whatever. All right. You look fine. Thank you. All right, so I need to just... I need to just talk to you all a little bit very quickly, um, if that's all right. <clears throat> Frey, Frey uh-huh. um, remember how I told you about my my best friend, right? This is this is that best friend. Ah. Um. Everyone, Eddie, can change his appearance, so don't be startled or alarmed. Yeah, so he's a he's a magic user. I'm sure he's well. He's got to be careful. There are witch hunters around, you know. He'll, it's a different sort of thing, really. Uh, he'll be all right. <clears throat> right. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, maybe he can teach me to do that trick if he can do it without the witch hunters knowing. No, a question for him later on. Can. Is that how he knows I'm moody? Uh, he's very observant, actually. I don't. I don't think that's part of his power, so to speak. He's, he's just really in tune with people because he loves popular culture, like theater and, and, and reading, and that's why we get along well. I don't, I mean, that's not really my area, but I love, um, you know, people because I like archaeology, but he's, he's really, he thinks they're fascinating from a observer standpoint, if you get my drift. So he likes to watch the theater. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, Tobias. I'm going to lean over to Tobias. He's one of the... Um, I'm not allowed to call him demons anymore. Never born. Thanks. What? And where... Shh. Okay. It's not here. Me, me, me. This. Yes. Is a good idea? <laughs> you think this is a good idea? No, I've known him for years, Tobias. He's completely harmless. And we can talk about this later, but and some of them live among you and me and just want to be part of society. I lean over to Tobias and go, you really want to talk about good ideas, friend? And I slap him <laughs> on the back. Hey, best friend of me will be best friend of mine, whatever. As long as there's no danger here, we're okay. And I glance over at the witch hunter who's in the cr- a crowd. Just just doing the whole looking around, looking at the birds, looking at the performers. Yep. He's not going to raise any alarms. The only people who will notice that he's um, changed slightly is us. And I left my gun at home. All right, all right. I'm, I'm taking your word for it, Meef. <laughs> you better. I don't have a choice, do I? No, you don't. It'll be fine. He's delightful. You don't have to worry. Um, <laughs> Eddie returns and is now wearing, um, <clears throat> instead of like just the normal tux, he now has a vibrant blue frock coat uh, with a little bit of like glitter, glitter and sparkles to it. Uh, the face has completely shifted. There is no longer a beard. It's a little bit more rounder. Uh, there are no eyebrows, you notice. Uh, his eyebrows are missing. Uh, and he's wearing a rather like a very out of place foppish hat with a big feather uh, that makes it look like he stepped out of a Shakespearean play and put it on something more modern. <laughs> Maeve looks him up and down and goes, yeah, passable. Excellent, excellent. Um, I mean... Do you happen to have a pen and maybe some paper so I can ask for autographs? Yeah, I got some. Oh, I thank you. You're scholar and a saint. 
Oh, oh yes, yes. And he carefully folds him up and puts him inside his jacket in the pen. All right. Um, at this point in time, the lily returns and says, Well, well, well. Aren't you all handsome, beautiful, and lucky? I suppose uh, dinner shall be served. And who has the pleasure of your company tonight? Wink. I think I have the rose. I'll, uh... Uh, what, you... We... We would be honored to, uh... Have the, have the company of Miss, Miss Colette Dubois. If, if, if you don't mind. If, if she's not terribly, terribly busy running the theater, you know? Well, I can't say I'm not jealous, but right this way. And she leads you um, catwalking and shawtang shamelessly in front of you uh, into sort of the backstage area where things are very busy. People are moving props. Uh, there's a lot of those faceless mannequins walking around, shifting large crates and whatnot. Eventually, you are led to a door that has Colette's name on it, being her dressing room. Uh, there's a light tap. A muffled voice says, come in, and Lily opens the door and gestures for you to go in. Inside, there is a long table with candles that has have been laid out. Uh, since the party basically just ate dinner, uh, there's not so much food. Rather, a spread of strawberries, chocolates, whipped cream, cakes... Uh, there's a silver platter in the center with a variety of fine cigars, a maid's cart next to it that is just filled with tons of different cocktails, liquors, mixtures. Uh, one of the faceless mannequins sort of stands to attention with a top hat and Colette Dubois shifts in her big chair in front of her vanity mirror. At this point, she's wearing a sort of a, a long mesh silken gown or robe rather that drags behind her as she walks around the room with peacock feathers sort of bursting around the collar. She smiles and says, well, who do I have the pleasure of meeting tonight and sharing a fine evening with? I want to stress that Nemo brought her bottle of whatever alcohol they brought her at the counter with her and is standing at the back of the group holding her alcohol. Sugar, I can make that into a cocktail if you like. Okay, yeah. Have a seat. There's no need to be shy here. We're all friends. Ellie... I'm going to walk forward, sort of shuffling a little bit, and take Colette, reach out for Colette's hand. She does the... The people you're dining with this evening are the winners of the rose. My name is Ellie Wiley. These are my companions. Tobias, Frey, the tall one. Nemo, Teresa. the one with the drink. Okay. And, uh... Meave. Hi. Nice and, of course, Eddie. Is currently viciously speechless and biting his nails violently. Uh, I would say Teresa, as soon as Nemo makes a noise, before I finish Nemo, I would just go, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> and Meeve is going to, as subtly as possible, swat Eddie's hand out of his mic. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Edward. <clears throat> um... She nods and says, well, have yourself a seat, sit where you like. Uh, I do apologize. There's a business associate that will be joining us tonight. A mutual friend, if you can call him that. Be intrigued about who you're friends with and who we're friends with. That would be <sighs> I wouldn't call him one of my friends, but a performer's work is simply never done. And um, 
she gestures and the sort of strange weird mannequin which actually I have a picture of them they look pretty creepy <laughs> um I, I keep mentioning them so I'm, I'm putting it up in the thing this is what they look like uh there you go that, that's so when I say mannequins these are the things I'm I'm sort of talking about. Uh, yeah, they're they're a little they're 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 not the most pleasant to look at for sure. Uh, so she she says, um, "Have a seat, right?" And, and the mannequin goes around and one by one pulls out the chairs for you guys and allows you to sit, tipping its top hat. Uh, as everyone is sat, uh, the mannequin begins to mix a series of drinks, and the door opens back up, and you see a. Well, for some of you, a familiar figure, a broad-shouldered, tall man in a long coat, top hat, cigar, almost yellowish eyes. The man that you have dubbed the wolf. And he kind of takes the cigar and taps it a little bit on the floor. Well, looks like you're all alive and still breathing. Hmm. Must be my lucky day. Yeah, we uh, we uh, succeeded a bit more than we than we would have hoped, uh, if you know what I mean. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it. <sighs> Fleck not glares at him right when he enters. Now. Not right now, right? Right now we're having a dinner with Talette Dubois and having totally casual conversations with the owner of the theater, right? Of course. Why wouldn't we be having casual conversations? We're going to talk to them later. We'll get into it. We'll get into it later. Right. Are those strawberries? And Neve is going to reach for one of the strawberries. I'll just be like, yay. Eating, eating a strawberry, completely ignoring everything else that's happened. You dig in. They're sweet, perfectly ripened. There's like a big platter of that perfect swirl of whipped cream, just all laid out. Fine goodness. Um, the... I'm going to keep calling it a mannequin because I can't pronounce what they're actually called. They're called like a Koyafi or something. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Hey, weird. If you can get back to me and give me a pronunciation for how to yeah. pronounce these. Written these the these... full international phonetic alphabet, if you please. <laughs> it's spelled C-Y-O-P-H-E-E. -E. I struggled with fire corpse or fear corpse. I can't pronounce this. Freycor. Freycor. God damn <laughs> Uh, Koyafi, Koyafi mannequin. Uh, it begins to go around and kind of like put out like a drink menu in front of you. And Colette kind of sighs at your guys' response and says, This is what I'm talking about. You come in and you make everyone uncomfortable. I would have liked to have a delightful, calm evening with my guests, and I do not appreciate you peddling your illicit dealings. In, in moments like this in my theater. Uh, the wolf sort of puts his boots up on the table, sits back, takes a big inhale of the cigar and says, well, times are hard and we all have to make sacrifices, don't we? <sighs> Very well, do your business and then perhaps afterward I can apologize with a more relaxing evening. I'm entirely aware of the nonsense this brute has gotten you all involved in. And he just grins. So, how'd it go? I mean, if, if Colette's aware of the nonsense, we looks to Nemo, we can discuss this here, right? Nemo is deep into her cocktail and just nods. I'm assuming it's brightly colored and full of fruit. Sure. It's whatever you order. They gave you a drink menu. Yeah, whatever it is that Zach's actually drinking right now is what Nemo is drinking. <laughs> oh, this. <laughs> yeah. This lovely, mm, delicious yeah. thing I made. Oh, beautiful. Ellie, Ellie sea has breeze. seemingly re regained a bit of her, her vigor and we'll just lean forward on the table. We got the job done. We did what you asked. 
Well, what'd you find? What was out there? And more importantly, where is it? It, uh, it wasn't so much of a what. It was more of a... Who is a very strong word, but it was more of a spirit? We're going to do some more research on what it was. But uh, the, uh, the, the, the moral of the story is it's uh, here. Like, here, like it possessed me. Um, yeah. All that matters is that we removed it and the guild did not get it. In fact, word, if it hasn't already came back, uh, the guild suffered some pretty tragic losses in Innocence. Yes, the people of Innocence didn't take too, li- too uh, kindly to being locked out of their only source of income, and it uh, bubbled to a head while we were there, one might say. Well, damn. I knew they were looking for something, but I didn't expect that. That's... Well, that's something. Something beyond my expertise. Hmm. Can you tell me anything more about this spirit? What do you want to know? Preferably everything. Why? What do you all know about the Arcanist? I know. Uh, you're muted, Deanna. <laughs> Nemo's just asking for more alcohol if we're going to continue this conversation. That's all <laughs> trying to do. Ray's going to light a cigar for sure. <laughs> It, 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 it's a buffet of cigar. Like, they all have the little, like, sticker around them, Frey, and you're just oh, seeing, like, all yes. these exotic yes, names. Yes, just yes. like, ooh, which one? Which one? I kind of look over and I go, may I, Miss Colette? Oh, 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 please. Help I start, I start pocketing quite a few of them. <laughs> I, they look too good. <laughs> <laughs> just right inside the coat, yeah. <laughs> it's the least I can do. She says, just still just the wolf, uh, definitely glaring at him. This woman openly is not trying to hide that she does not like this man and does not like that he decided to do his business here. <clears throat> um, to answer your earlier question, uh, oh, I don't think I got your name. I'm Meve. Vogel. Oh, nice to meet you. And Meve will shake his hand if it is offered um, and says <clears throat> it's very hairy <laughs> lovely um, yeah me shakes and says um, we are fully intending to do some research on the matter while we're here in Malifaux City um, I am uh, someone who is accustomed to research so while we don't have much to give you now we'll see what we can dig up I I know what it did. Uh, I know something. I don't know what it can do, but I know what it did. Uh, it <laughs> summoned some sandworms. Uh, it summoned some sandworms. It summoned some apple trees. So, you know, what it can do is uh, very interesting. Um, but about that, about that Oculus thing, you know, I'm, looks over at them. At every all the party, you know, I'm I'm here for the Arcanists. Uh, I know they're trying to take down the guild, and that's what I'm all about. I know that the Arcanists are potentially two-faced and dangerous, so I'd like to know why they're interested here. Two-faced. Well, and your friends. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. They don't like the guild. The way you look at it, I think it's the way a lot of people look at it. The guild likes to talk about the Arcanists as some sort of extreme terrorist group. 
paint them as the number one most wanted. They're not. They give back to the workers, the unions, helping put food in the bellies of the downtrodden and desolate. Now, I'm not saying I'm an archivist. There's a term that guild lawyers like to use. Plausible deniability. If you don't know who is working for whom, you can't really testify. So, just think of me as your generous uncle, who can get you what you need for Christmas. Good. We had a deal before we left for Innocence, and I'd like to see that deal concluded. What is it you would like in payment, Miss Ellie? 450 script. That's a lot of money. Do you have a place you would like it to be delivered? I yes. can send it to where you're staying. No. I only need 50 of it sent to me. The rest of it. And Ellie pulls out a journal. Her, her little brown journal. And she tears out a page. The rest of it will be sent to a variety of other places. This page will tell you where to go. Does that work for uh, you? He extends his hands, and you can notice that, like his fingernails are very unkempt and very yellow, almost like kind of like clawed and nicotine stained. It'll be done. You'll find that as unpleasant as I can be. I tend to be a man of my word. Colette sort of mutters under her breath, saying pleasant's an understatement. What you'll find with this list, by the way, is that for some of them, I give directions about what how that script will appear. Things like to a person named Dr. Agatha Lee down in Incense, the script should appear predominantly in medical supplies and scientific equipment, not actually in forms of money. I'm subtle, if not anything. And the rest of you, I believe I had a deal with, well, three more of you, but I don't see one here. I'll assume he didn't make it out. What about you, Tobias? Me, Mr. Vogel, I'm a... Uh, rather than a thing, like, I want... <sighs> press the advantage i have the thing the, the 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 thing we got out of this is is in me you know we should got a powerful tool we got a powerful tool we should use that that's that's what i want i want you know be part of the planning committee be part of the you know find a way to use this to further our goals you're looking to hurt the guild i am indeed i'll ask in our circles you can write me up a dossier about what you know. The more I know, the easier it's going to be for me to find out information about what it is you decided to bond with. I mean, that's well. Well, when when we know what we decide, what I decided to bond with, we'll uh, get back to you. Looks over at me. Where we're we're, we're, we're we're starting a research journey over here. There's always work. I can find you things similar to what you did at the factory, if that's what you like. Things that can... Places where we can put your gifts to good use. I do have a, a background to collect information. Used to work for this Tatler. Wrote up a few good stories, found a few good secrets. Some, uh, got a few talents. The news is a powerful tool. We usually put flyers around, but we could use someone with a silver tongue. I'll ask around. I'll Appreciate give you some it. options. I will say that doesn't feel like a reward, but that's what you want. I'm happy to work with you. I appreciate it. I got a, I got a lot of you. free time now. <laughs> the, uh, 
the quiet one that drinks too much. What were you looking for? There's a second where Nemo looks a little bit surprised that he is talking <laughs> to her, and then she takes a second. Ah. I need to be able to, um... I have a personal project that I might need assistance with. I don't have the full details yet, but I would... It might be necessary to have someone's help, so... Do you need specifics? The more specifics you give me, the more I can help you. It's not set in stone, it's... Most likely it's just taking... <sighs> moving someone from one place to another place, essentially. So, like a getaway wagon. What's the best way to contact you? Well, you could always just ask Colette here, and she says, Hell no, you can't! He chuckles and rolls his eyes. <sighs> Can they at least leave a message? 25 script a message. I have to pay you 25 script if I leave a message. No, darling, darling, not you. This chuckle fuck. All right. 25. Yes, you can leave a message at the front. Uh, sometimes packages are delivered for performers as gifts. Uh, just make sure to attach it to a bouquet of flowers. Right. Okay. Yeah, further details as I develop my personal project. Uh, at this point, me, you see that uh, Colette, she's still kind of giving attention to everyone else and... Um, you know, she's had a few strawberries, breaking off a bit of chocolate, and she hasn't noticed Eddie, who is just standing with a smile, giddy as a schoolgirl, holding his paper. And there's been a few times where he's been like, but then he doesn't say anything. Like he lives, he just it just hasn't built up the courage, uh, but she just hasn't noticed him standing to the side and a little bit behind her. Miss Dubois, sorry to end. Uh interrupt but while all of this boring nonsense is happening mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine a little bit shy maybe a little starstruck I think he'd like your autograph oh I'm so sorry he's like please if, if, if it's not too much I'm, just, ah. I'm sorry dear absolutely it's, this has been a very stressful evening uh, who should I make it out to Eddie Eddie Poe if you don't mind and she Gives him a little narrowed look and says, All right, Eddie Poe, and writes it up and even like kisses it, puts a little nice old lipstick mark on there. And he's like, I shall treasure this as if it were a gift from an angel itself. <laughs> and goes and sits back down happily. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, oh, uh, and she waves over to the mannequin and, uh, Pour them all a drink of absinthe. Uh, I apologize. I had Lily poison your drinks. Volgo here said you were important, and my staff noticed you were armed, and one of you quite large. You seem all right. No hard feelings. A woman has to protect herself. So um, the antidote is in the absinthe. So um, yeah, drink that or... Things will go south in a few hours for you. All right. <laughs> Maeve okay. is just like, <laughs> tosses it back. It got that nice black licorice minty taste. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. That explains what happened. Dirt. That explains what happened earlier. Ellie drinks it. You can never be too careful. Now, um, Mongrel Vogel. Right. Um, are we done here? Can you scoot? Yeah, this place is a little too frilly for me, anyways. Um, I'll get your request taken care of. You 
send flowers to the lady when you need me, and I'll be in touch with you, Mr. Tobias. Sir, thank you. And he uh, puts his cigar uh, on, like, the nice clean tray where half the cigars have been plundered by Frey and walks out of the room. <sighs> the weight and the stench of that man. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, I meant for this to be a relaxing time and a reward for you, but you know, we all have to pay our dues, so to speak. Now, um, oh, we, uh, we came here to we came here to see this guy. How do, how does how does he know you? He's, uh, he's so rough, and you're so uh, not rough. Thank you. We deal in similar social circles, we'll say. Uh, the theater needs money, support, and Mr. Vogel has been an excellent supporter and sometimes abuses that power for audiences and illicit meetings that I would not like to have in my theater. What did you all think of the show? It was beautiful. I we I was in awe the whole time. It was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, for all intents and purposes, unless anyone has anything really specific you want to ask Colette, um, you, we can just say you had a nice evening. It's the the floor is kind of your guys is here. I hadn't planned much with Colette because she doesn't know a lot about you, but you guys are more than welcome to ask her anything. If not, we can just end it with a like a beautiful ribbon on top. Uh, I would like to ask her about um, you know, he this the v Vogel. He he brought up a he he brought up a um a, a group the the Arcanists. You know, I figure someone as as in the know as you you would you would know a thing or two about them. How do, how do how do you feel about them? They are for all intensive purposes illicit magic users and in my profession I am under the con constant scrutiny of the guild under suspicion of such terrible acts I do my best to dis disassociate myself from them lest they shut down my theater and take away those who are very dear to me I, I can understand that. That'd be, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd die if, if I lost all my friends over here. So I can, I can understand that sentiment. Yes, of course. You want to uh, protect the people you care about and your livelihood. It only makes sense. The show is lovely, Ms. Dubois. Um, it's not my first time at the theater, but uh, I really, truly appreciated it this time. Thank you so much. It's always good to hear the adoration of the audience. They say that it's the fuel for a performer. Here, 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 here. Definitely. That's why I've been here a few times. Points at Eddie. <laughs> He's darling. Do you have any uh, things that trouble you at all that we could do services for you at all paying activities jobs i the jobs i have that may require your skills i would hesitate to get you involved in i would warn you to be careful of Mr. Vogel's offer. How about uh, some more mundane jobs? Uh, you know, some things. Uh, I've, I've noticed your posters around town. You know, I I do know my way around a printing press. Like I know how to Im uh, embed gold leaf on a few things. I know how to uh, you know make make a few pretty posters. If you're if you have a need of something like that, you know, I humbly offer my services to the Star Theater. Advertising is always appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who knows their way around a printing press, a bit of art, 
I mean, we're always coming out with new shows and everything. I, quite frankly, that is the type of work I would love to have you involved in. <laughs> Something safe and uh, tipping its hat to the arts, to the mm. beauty that can be in Malivo. Yeah, and, and not everyone can afford to go to the theater. At least, the least they can do is see a little bit of art on the streets with the posters. Absolutely. I, I'd be willing to, to pay quite a bit for the right artist. Well, uh, in that case, I don't have a phone number, but uh, I'm not... Mm. I'll tell you what. How about you feel free to send as many messages and flowers as you want to contact me and write up the contract. Even if it takes multiple gifts, I'm sure Vogel would be more than happy to front the bill. <laughs> All right, I will. I will absolutely do that. Thank you, Mister Bois. And as a lady, I always do appreciate the flowers. <laughs> Should say <clears throat> about the other jobs. I know you don't want to get us involved, but for the right price, I'm ready to. So keep me in mind. Give me a call, and I'll show up to the theater when you need. I'll keep that in mind. Um, but you all seem like sweet people and just be careful not to get in over your heads as she says that phrase at the at the uh clean buffet of cigars where uh vogel just put out his cigar and just goes he's he's cleaning it up as she says that and he turns and goes uh uh, i'm i'm sorry if there if he was rude to you ma'am Oh, yeah. sweetheart, sweetheart, sh- you don't have to do that. You're you're my guest. And then she's like, please, please. And, you know, the uh, the little mannequin comes over and, like, tries to shove your hand away, but it's like a wet tissue against a, a brick wall. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. He just, uh, he just may need another talking to. Aren't you sweet? The valiant nut. Hmm. I do love a sweet man. What'd you think of the show? <laughs> I was hoping that was it. Uh, <laughs> Frey blushes. Uh, and when he blushes, it's like a deep purple uh, due to his blood not being normal colors. Uh, and he just takes a long drag of a cigar and just... It was my beautiful ma'am. <clears throat> she she kind of slips out the, the, the shoulder and like she still has like her costume and corset over, but it's just the, the bare shoulder. And she's like, did you uh, have a favorite part? Whole thing. Art was beautiful. It was art, wasn't it? Mm hmm. At this point, you hear a glass shatter on the table, and and you can see Ellie has was reaching for one and seemed to have just knocked it over, and was like, "Sorry, absinthe." Oh, my bad. It's fine. That's fine. I I know it can be quite strong the first time, and already the mannequin's starting to sweep it. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> I've got several backups in the back. Anyone else? Do we feel our Colette time has uh, come to a conclusion? Temperature wise, do I feel like the mannequins would be able to see me if I stole something? <laughs> um, I won't make you flip for that. I will say, um, even though they have no face, they yeah. with ease can pick up things and cool, seem cool, to operate cool, cool, cool. fine. So I can't just tuck a bottle of absinthe in my... Well, I don't know how big the bottle is. in my dress pocket. They're they're normal size, like, liquor bottles. Just in the cleavage. No? Okay, so that sounds like it mm. will be a little difficult to pull off. Okay, Nemo will not do that then. But she thinks about it. Alright. She didn't even drizzle it over a sugar cube, but... It was... It was, it was it was an antidote. Sorry, I'm just... Yeah. Um, yeah, anything else? No. 
No, I've we'd... got something for when we leave or get back to the gallows or whatnot, but not anything else for collect. Okay. Um... Okay, so, uh... You guys have a, a beautiful evening with Colette. Um, Toby, keep that in mind. Like you do have that that resource open. Uh, I'll definitely say that stuff might come up later. I, I, she appreciates the offer, Ellie. But yeah, we'll leave it at that. Don't want to get too meta. Um, but no, uh, you do have that option to do the printing press job and continue to essentially build like a relationship with Colette. After that, um, you guys step out into the night air. As um, everyone's stepping out, um, Maeve is gonna kind of touch Ellie's like wrist and be, and be like, hang back a minute. Yeah. Uh, waits for everyone to kind of leave them behind and then immediately like walks up to her and puts a hand against her forehead and it's like like back of the hand against the forehead kind of okay you just and kind of checks her pulse what's going on Ellie this isn't the poison none of the rest of us had this in a, none of the rest of us reacted this way well, that's lucky you, I guess. I don't know. I didn't drink that much and eat that much. It's kind of going to, like, feel her forehead again, like, kind of push some hair out of, out of her, like, because she's been a little sweaty, and just... Ellie? Nemo came to me last, the other night, about you losing your tooth you know um there's like strands on your hand when you pushed away the hair oh. by the way yeah Meve notices but just kind of brushes it off and doesn't i know she's worried about you but i i, 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 just, I just told her don't worry um if i get a chance to talk to you i will and i just watched you and you have been getting sicker Damn it, Nemo. All right. Don't hold this against Nemo. I've I've been watching you, Ellie. I mean, it's I would say it's not hard to tell, but I'm sure it is for some people. But but I've been. I mean, I I see I see you. Okay, you're not. Don't I don't know. Be mad at Nemo for this. Yeah, I won't. Okay, fine. I don't know. Got to innocence and. I don't know what it is. It's just getting worse. Okay. What can I I'm, do I'm to hope... help? Give me a couple of days. I think it's the stress. Maybe I have to think about it. Okay. Maybe it's it's been tough. Well... Right. I'm. As you can clearly see, I'm breaking a little bit right now, so I just need some time. All right. Well, look. I'm not going to bother you. I think I'm about to say an oxymoron. I'm not going to bother you, but I'm not going to leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, that's an oxymoron. Um, I won't make a big deal about it in front of everyone, but you usually don't lose teeth from the stress, so we're going to yeah, no, trust me. Okay. I figure it was just one that was kind of loose, but look, I, we've done some stuff when we were here before, and I feel like it might be involved with that. Okay. We'll can we talk out. about this? Yeah, can we talk yeah. about this over a lunch sometime? Yeah, they're going to get suspicious if we're gone too long. Anyway, just, um, you're not, I'm not going to let you deal with this alone. And me, kind of opens the door to the theater to let and gestures to Ellie. Thanks. Give me just a couple of days. Think about it. I have some ideas, so I gotta come back to you. Okay. All right. Well. 
I want to say waiting at like the corner for them because clearly they've not been there for a while. Nemo's like standing with with Frey and Tommy. So do you think they have like like a thing? I mean, yeah, they wouldn't be hanging behind this long if they weren't making out or something, you know. Okay. I mean, what what's what's the thing? Well, like Ellie doesn't like people generally most of the time. Ellie doesn't even like me, and I think Ellie does like me. So. Ah, do you think so you, shot? Oh. you mean you mean a friendship? Do they do they have a friendship? You don't gotta be fr- you don't got you don't have to be friends to make out. Fair, fair, fair point. Damn, I fucking love you, you sweet boyfriend. <laughs> the greatest series of advice of all time coming up. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> as they're coming out of the theater, you see, uh, uh, the two of you see that Ellie's or that Nemo is just like looking at your mouths in a little bit of a weird way to go like, does it look different? No, no, it was probably it- a friendship. Just looking. <laughs> I don't know. Ellie's pretty sweaty. I don't know. It's uh, it Ellie's might, always pretty sweaty. <sighs> yeah, she stinks too. If only she would have showered. Well, she it's um, it's from the road. It's, it's supposed to be like a musk, I think. Hell yeah, man! It's the smell of the wild right there. You like yeah, it, Frey? Of course, I like it. Right, I mean, it's know. fine. It's fine. Yeah, Frey. I know you don't come to the city often, but we're in a theater. You're not supposed to smell when you come to a theater. <laughs> that that uh, is my first theater, yeah. While these three are just <laughs> chatting, <laughs> uh, as we emerge out of the theater, Ellie is going to just like, me, thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks. And hugs me for just a second. It was just not like a bad freeze, not like a ah, but just like a oh, oh okay, pats gently. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't don't worry about it. <laughs> We're gonna. Is it normal to say thank you after you make out with somebody? That's <laughs> okay. Oh, well, all right, all right. Before this goes any farther, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna set up the camera cut and go to break before you guys just talk out in front of the damn theater for like seven hours. Meave is hugged by Ellie, and across the street, down a small alleyway, the neon sign flickers to life that says open on a familiar shop. And during this tender moment, you look over and Eddie is applauding at what is at this moment of affection that's happening in front of him. Meave looks so embarrassed. <laughs> Just... Ellie is the most stiff back you'd ever seen a person ever become instantly. Looks at Eddie and just goes, I'm it- it was so beautiful. It was like something out of Romeo and Juliet. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going back to the gallows now. I've had a long night. What are you three doing over there? Nemo gives you a thumbs up. We're, we're admiring the show, just like he is. <laughs> and we are going to go on break Ellie with that. And, <laughs> and Meep goes, show's over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's where we're going to go on break. <laughs> people on purpose, Bog one.
All right, we can trust her, Boyos. <laughs> She's not gonna hurt anybody. <laughs> Oh, wait, uh, does anyone have a lockpick? No! No, we don't need one!
All right. Welcome back. We're going to get right back into it. Um, you guys finish your night at the theater. You head back to the gallows. Uh, Ronan is behind the bar. There is a new broken down piano that's sort of been brought in. And you can see Kit sort of skittering around it, fixing it. Uh, Ronan being like, no, 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 not that one. The other one. Um, she tips her hat to you as you come in and you make your way uh, back into the room to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah as they're getting ready for bed, Meave is going to, as nonchalantly as possible, go to the bathroom, wet a cloth, and like hand it to Ellie and be like, put this on your face while you're sleeping. Not the whole face, just the top of your face. Mm, thanks. Yep. Ellie just goes, curls up uh, on one of the beds. It's not my turn tonight. And then goes to sleep on one of the beds. My turn. Very nice. Everybody go to sleep. I'll um, wrestle you tomorrow, Tobias. Is there? There's enough beds for all of us. Um, I think. Nemo took her turn, is taking her turn tonight. All right, Nemo. all right. Tomorrow, don't you worry about it. I gotta prepare for it. Don't worry, I'll beat you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Tobias has to and take off all his fancy ass makeup that he put on and then go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you take off your makeup, and everyone heads to bed. Deep in the darkest bowels of night, when no man should be awake. <laughs> Nemo is. Nemo doesn't sleep very much anymore. She used to, but it seems kind of pointless now, and it kind of... It feels pointless now to do it. And, uh, she spends a while, she sits in front of the door, watching as she normally does, and then she's trading around to just watching everybody sleep and then just staring at Meeve for a long time while Meeve is sleeping and Meeve soon after I don't I don't know how perceptive Meeve is as a sleeper if they're like a super light sleeper or something but there's a presence over you awesome so you would perk up when there's just like nothing is touching you but there is a presence above you in your bed after a minute or two, the most, Meeve is... Nemo's just, Nemo. like, over you. Just looming over your face. Hi. Hello, is this... Nemo. Is this a bad time? No? Uh, I mean, depends. Uh, what's going on? Right, sorry. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, of course, um... Yeah, first of all, sorry, and if you want me to shut up so you can go back to sleep, obviously that's fine, because you don't need to, uh... Mm. I just, I have a couple of, um... What? No, no, uh, go ahead, uh, and Meeve is gonna, like, sit up a little and kind of sit to the side and pat the side of the bed and be like, sit down, what's up? Nemo, oh. like, stares at the spot to sit down. Right, um, I just have, I have some questions that are sort of, um... They're not academic, they're very mechanical, they're very, um, uh, you know, sort of, um, and they're more, and you know, obviously you don't have to explain anything to me, it's just a thing that I'm curious about, and if I'm asking you these questions, I'm not asking you to do anything about it, it's more just I'm trying to understand something. Okay, right, um, shoot, yeah, if I can answer, I will. Right. And I'm not expecting, like, a lecture or anything, no, I don't mean, I don't mean, like, um, I'm sure you give very good lectures at whatever it is that you do. I'm saying that I won't understand it because I'm uneducated. So, like, explain it as though I'm a fucking idiot. All right. Um. So when you when you talk to a uh, someone who's kicked it, are you talking? Are you like like summoning them, or are you like? Uh, calling on a memory of them or, or is it like pre-recorded or, or well there is a lot Nemo that uh, even those of us who deal in death as it were don't understand about this so I, I can only tell you what I think or what I believe uh, which I'm sure is not um, reassuring uh, but for me what I feel 
that um, seance is, is an invitation, an invitation to communicate, an invitation to speak. So if, um, if there's a spirit that wants to speak to me, um, this sort of opens the door for them. Uh, I don't believe it's any sort of commanding, and I, I okay. Um, <clears throat> if you talk to people who believe in, in, in all of the more supernatural side of things, generally they believe that there's a couple of different types of ghosts, the sentient ones, the ones that are uh, memory, uh, sort of a re memory we're playing over and over, and um, the ones that are sort of attached to something, right? And um, I don't think I've ever communicated with one of the ones that's just a memory, because as far as I know, that's sort of like a, a, a space in time, you know? But I've certainly communicated with my fair share of sentient ghosts and sentient spirits, and, and, and maybe some of them are actually beyond wherever that is, whatever that is. Uh, I can't really say. All I know is that, you know, you get the sort of this is who killed me or tell them I'm happy now or whatever. Um, or or um, please tell everyone that's not a footstool, it's a headrest. That sort of thing. Um, so, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, I hope it uh, answers your, your question, but I, I guess it's sort of an invitation. Right. Yeah, uh, so it sounds like if maybe part of somebody died, that doesn't make any sense. It's, uh, I'm going to be, okay, I'm going to ask something, and when I ask it, it's it's not me saying, can, can you do this for me, as in you have to do this for me, I'm just asking if it's a thing that is possible. possible. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. I think, I mean, I'm dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think there are parts of me that have been dead for a long time and are no longer, you know, here. Okay, so the way that I understand, like, and I don't know shit about shit, but like, if you have a memory, right, you experience something and then somewhere in your brain it gets stored away and you can right. go in and you can receive the memory and and have mm. it there and okay. sometimes a lot of the time it's like I'll be in the room right and I'll put the memory down and I'll turn around and when I turn back it's gone not like it was never there it's like object permanence or whatever it's just it's left it's moved on somewhere else yeah, and okay. if if it if you know someone like you can reach across, you know, the place where we are and the place where things go, would you be able to? Probably not, but would you be able to pull those things back? All I can say, Nemo, is we can try. Um, there's. Uh, n not to get too academic about this, but it brings up an interesting question of so. Um, and excuse me, I hope this is um, this frankness isn't too insensitive. But I guess the question is: is it because there's a? I mean, we know that there's parts of you that are more dead than others, and is the memory center of your brain not functioning correctly because of? blood flow or something but then if that's the case well we know that when someone someone dies fully they're able to be a spirit right so if parts of you are gone maybe there is a way we can retrieve it and um the way i would think to try and do that would be i guess and this is a bit odd because i've never really done it with someone who's able to partake in a physical body but um a seance um we could try a seance um i could invite 
um, your subconscious to that door, you know, the same way I invite um, any spirit there, and, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and that's all right. And if it does, maybe it could help. What, what do you think? And you, you just do that. Yeah. Well, it takes a little bit of preparation um, to do it really properly. And yeah. um, you know, there's one thing to be like, "Is anyone here with me?" But there's another thing to be like, "All right, we're having a dedicated situation." So, uh, yes. But the short answer is yes. Um, uh, yes, but not you know, like right now. That, I mean, would you like? Is there something life? that I can do for you? I don't have any money. I gave no. it. Tobias burned an orchard down with his brain demon, and I gave the guy all of my money. Um, alright, alright. Um, yeah, I got part of that story. Um, listen, Sorry. Nemo, you don't have to do anything for me, but. If it makes you feel better, oh, it's just going to make me sound like an asshole. Um, if it makes you feel better, it is a matter of scientific curiosity, so I, I'm gaining that from it. But I mean, even if it wasn't, you didn't have to do. Yeah, no. If you want to do experiments or something while it's happening, that's fine. Like <laughs> that makes sense. Oh no, no. I'm just saying that it will be a learning experience for me uh, because I've never tried to communicate with someone in your situation. I'm not saying I'm going to do experiments on you. Let me be. Well, it would be okay. Clear. Well, it would be fine if you did. So. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind for the future, but that's not what I'm going to do. Um, I look. Um, yeah, I've used my medium powers to help. Uh, people who have been dead for a really long time be slightly better represented in the current public eye uh, and that's great and all but you know they are dead uh, they're gone in a very permanent way and um, you're still here and um, it'll be nice even if we can't even if nothing comes of it it'll be nice to do something for someone who can care about the fact that I did it. Someone who can still, I don't know, live some sort of life from it and, and maybe get something positive out of it. Uh, so so that's what you're doing for me, you know, don't, don't worry so much about things having to be tip for tat. Ellie appreciates it. What? I'm, I'm assuming you... I was making fun of you, but you probably weren't making out with Ellie back then. I, I, I do appreciate you looking out for her, and she appreciates you looking out for her, so... Just so you know. Thank She's you. not going to say it, though, so... Right. Thank you, Nemo. Um, I, uh... Yeah, I, I listened... You know, I mean, I've, I've, I've been watching, I've been seeing, but I listened when you came to me, and, um, we're gonna figure it out, so, don't, I, I can't say don't worry, that's stupid, but, um, we'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night, Good night. Nemo. Good night, right. Eve. Um, see you in the morning. Um, yeah. Eve is gonna kind of pull their covers up and go back to sleep. It'll take Nemo a second to get it. While you're pulling the covers up, she's like sitting on top of them, so it's a little difficult for a second. She's like, okay, gets up and goes back to her spot by the door. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys wake up the following morning and we're going to start moving into a little more quicker pace. What are you doing over the next couple of days? Now that we've entered the official downtime session, we're going to start scrolling through time a little bit. So we'll say, we'll start with a week. What are we doing in the first week? 
one thing Meeb will do is first speak to, and um, which we don't really have to play out, and inform Nemo that a uh, stronger seance involves other people. Um, and Nemo will kind of... nod a lot and leave the room as quickly as possible. <laughs> just like, yeah. yeah, that's fine. And um, Meeb's gonna hop to kind of the other members of the group, but I'm just gonna intersperse that with whatever everyone else is doing. All right, so let's uh, let's set it up to where this happens. Uh, we'll 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 take a week to set it up, um, and we'll go down the list where Meve asks everyone. So uh, I'm I'm gonna look in the chat. Who's first? It's Toby. Toby, where are you when Meve approaches you and asks you to join the seance? Here, muted. You're muted. Sorry. Uh, when Meeve approaches Tobias is probably going to be <sighs> near the gallows because uh, yeah, we're all together. Um, but he's absolutely going to say, "What's what's wrong with uh, what's?" Oh, um, Nemo is. Uh, you know, I, I I forget that that's that she's uh she's dead. Um, but yeah, let's let's if we can help her out, let's let's help her out. That's uh. Not something that should be, you know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, the thing is, um, yeah, these sorts of things are a little stronger when there's more than um, like one person involved, especially when there's that sort of energy of someone, people who care about you at least to a certain extent. So, it's um, yeah, I, I, I um, if you don't mind, uh, you won't have to do much. Probably just you know lend your energy and hold hands with people and things like that. So um, if you don't mind. Yeah, don't we'll don't just... don't worry. I'll I'll hold everyone's hand. I'll give you my energy. You know, we'll 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 get this figured out. Is Nemo around or no? Mm. Oh. Nemo is hiding. Okay. Uh, in that in that case, you know, I'll I'm, I'll, I'll I'll do anything to help Nemo. You know, I I, I can care about her. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, yeah, let, let me know when this is. I'll be there. I'll be there to help Nemo out. Don't you worry. Great. Um. Well, that's about it then. Um. I'll let you know. We're gonna do it one of these evenings anyway, though. So we'll all be. Well, we'll be yeah, here. We'll be here. We'll be together. Right. Great. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Tobias. <laughs> it's um. Good of you. Mm. Good of you to help. <laughs> I'm nothing if not good. Uh, besides that conversation, Tobias is, you know, uh, hitting up the Star Theater, seeing about that, following up on that lead for advertising work, uh, and then trying to not stalk guild members, but like keep his ear to the ground if anything happens, you know, trying to report on events, I guess, uh, you know, broadcast it when he has time things like that of that nature i will write you up uh a contract like a not a contract because contract it requires dedication an offer mm -hmm. uh that colette will give you yeah and i will i will i will send you that via outside of the game um yes down okay frey what are you up to Uh, I am feeding Callie, of course. Callie, uh, has been pretty restless ever since you got to the city. Uh, this horse that is normally very curious and wants to explore and be everyone's friend has seemed a bit unhappy with the lack of grass, the stone pavement, and is kind of, uh, she's kind of keeping to herself now. Doesn't, doesn't like being cooped up, doesn't like being tied outside with the cars, just not, not liking it, not loving it. Ah, oh, God. Uh, Maybe we'll show up round about then, if that's all right. Sure. Uh, hey. Hey. Frey and uh, go up to Callie and be like, hey girl, and kind of pat her neck. You're very happy you, and nudges into your hand. You know, Meve, they like that. You like them. They make, they make you happy, right, girl? Oh, she's she's been a damn mess since we got to the city. I, I, 
I'll tell you what. Open air, huh? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, the pavement feels weird on her hooves. I think she just walks different. I, I don't. Why don't we I'll tell you what. Find her a park or something. That yeah, I was gonna say. Walks? Is that a thing you do? I don't know, but I think we should. Do you, do you want to take my horse on a walk with me? I mean, I can't imagine a better way to spend my afternoon. Let's Hell yeah. take your horse on a walk. Damn, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. And and I I blatantly, I take Callie's saddle off and everything. She just has the harness so that I can have her on a pole or a leash, essentially. Lead? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Uh, lead. Yep. Lead. And uh, yeah, we we just start walking around the city. Come on, girl, it's it's okay. And I just keep giving her apples to tell her that the pavement is good. It's okay. <laughs> she she seems a little uh, a little skittish at first. Like uh, sometimes horses can can sidestep. So like there's like the occasional automobile that automobile that goes by, and she like steps to the side, right, <laughs> and just seems to be actually like kind of avoiding people but um as you continue to walk along the horse does seem to calm down and be a little bit more relaxed and just kind of happy to be moving uh definitely the movement is helping and you guys walk down the street and in the distance you can hear uh the soft strum of a guitar as there's like kind of a man leaned up against a wall playing with a uh, the guitar case open, the hustle and bustle of the downtown still going along. Actually, you're not in downtown. No, there's not. <laughs> well, you ended up downtown. The hustle and bustle yeah. of a bunch of zombies I in the quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna say Kelly. Walk her around the quarantine zone. Kelly <laughs> probably gets left not inside the quarantine zone. So please, God, no. Clementine's <laughs> in the quarantine zone. Yeah, She's in the tunnel outside our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but for all intents and purposes, we'll say that you've been trying to keep Kelly a little bit more calm by keeping her outside of the quarantine zone, where you've heard uh, there's a notorious undead problem. Yeah, yeah, we do not want Kelly in the quarantine zone. Not in a You're in downtown years. right now. Yeah, you're in downtown. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. What's on your mind? Oh, um, well, I mean, horse walk, but I... I'll be uh, I'll be straightforward. I, I did have a bit of a favour to ask, um, if you don't mind. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to make you agree to anything until, you, until I explain it. But, um, Nemo, she um, she came to me. She wants to try to have a séance to recover some memories that she's lost. We're not sure if it will work, but a real proper séance is stronger when more people are involved. Uh, and if you're comfortable, um, we wouldn't mind, um, it, it would be nice if, uh, I mean, I was going to ask if you wouldn't mind lending your support and your energy. Um, nothing nefarious, just asking Nero some questions, hoping we can get some answers. But it's a little unusual uh, because she's not like a spirit from the beyond or a spirit that's walking around with craft is. She's just a, a person who happens to be dead. Um, but we thought we'd give it a try. All right. Uh, comfortable is definitely not the word that I would describe myself, but uh, I've told Nemo multiple times I've I've got her back, and uh, it's probably time for me to follow through on that, huh? Oh, that's entirely up to you, Ray, but um, this is a way that you can hopefully help. Let, let me ask, uh, am I allowed to be uncomfortable or nervous? Or, like, do the spirits smell that and, uh, you know, attack or some shit? I oh, Right. Um, no. I mean, yes. I mean, of course you're allowed to be uncomfortable and nervous. Absolutely. But okay. you don't have to worry. Um, I, uh, okay, so, okay. Here's the thing. Um, normally, when you're, um, 
doing a seance, you're opening a door, you're inviting people to communicate, and 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 usually, I'm pretty good at targeting a specific person and being like this person or whoever's here or whatever. So when I say Nemo, you know, hopefully that's Nemo that comes through. Um, I haven't had a lot of problem with people who weren't invited coming through because um, one of the most important things is uh, being very direct with your words. You know, like if you're leaving somewhere that's really, really haunted, you kind of want to say like, um, I really appreciated the time that we've been able to spend together, but you cannot follow me right. home. You need to stay here. So that's really the, I mean, the way it works with spirits to my knowledge and in my experience. Oh, I can't okay. promise you anything, but I can say that I've had primarily positive experiences and you shouldn't be at risk or in danger. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's give it a shot if I can help her out. I, I certainly will. Uh, Absolutely. So as we're walking, uh, I, I imagine we're still on pavement. We're still on the street. Callie is sidestepping kind of people and cars. They're in weird garb that they're not that she's not used to, and also explicitly avoids manhole covers if those exist. <laughs> she will not step on those. Those yep, are yep. pits from hell for her. She will not step on yep. them. Uh, and and so as we're walking, I just I, I kind of slow down a bit, and I just go, uh, "Maeve, uh, I've actually been meaning to talk to you too." All right. Well, uh, here we are. Yeah, yeah. It's a good good time. Uh, I you talk about Neverborn, and. Uh, you talk a lot about them. Hell, you're friends with them. Uh, I guess you could consider me kind of one myself. Uh, I've had nothing but horrible, horrible experiences. And I... With these, I, I want to call them people. I do, but I'm just so fucking angry at them. I cannot see them like I see you standing right there. And you talk about them with a with a sort of respect that I it draws my curiosity. Uh so me me would you mind just kind of teaching me more about what you know about the Neverborn. Yeah. Um, Frey, I'm really sorry that you've been through that. And I think to a different extent and in a in different, uh, different situation um, than what you've been through, the others sort of maybe have a similar experience um, in that... Uh, they believe they've only had negative experiences with Neverborn. And um, how do I... I think the first thing I would say to you, Frey, is that you'll need to adjust your perception and, and not in what you know, which you know that these Neverborn that you've experienced terrible things with did terrible things. That's... um. That's non-negotiable in my mind. Um, I generally trust your outlook on things, so I don't think you uh, are incorrect there. I'm sure it was um, terrible. But what I can say is I bet you any money, at least here in Malifaux, that you have had good experiences with Neverborn. You just didn't know they were Neverborn. Um, Eddie... He's what they call a mimic. A lot of them just want to fit into society. They adopt uh, personage of, you know, a human, usually someone they've just made up. I mean, yes, they could mimic someone, which is troublesome in its essence, but only if abused. Um, but a lot of them 
not all of them, just like, you know, anyone. A lot of them are just sort of here. And the only reason that Eddie is easier to spot is because he's a bit terrible at it and he's always missing something whenever he uh, switches. Like, you know, first he had the pink in his beard and then he didn't have the eyebrows. I've always been able to, almost always, almost always been able to spot him because of that, you know always something just a bit off but most of them are pretty good at it it's not like i've met a, a, a million of them yeah. and i'm sure there are bad ones as well um, yeah but it... Frey Frey is just kind of like right hand on on the lead left hand just kind of clenched white knuckling and just yeah eddie's uh eddie seems like a good one i i I got to know if one of the main reasons I'm even asking you right now is I need to know if blood determines what kind of never born you are. Uh, yes. I thought, does it determine how you behave, how you act? Because I thought uh i thought getting away from them would help and s things seem to be getting worse and frey proceeds to pull out his utility knife and cut his hand he's done it in front of me before you know blood trickles out you hear it sizzle on the on the pavement a little bit he's kind of hiding it he's in he's in a crowd he doesn't want to be too you know, uh, forward with it, but he, he kind of holds his hand open. And he goes, "Me, I have taken a lot of wounds and a lot of licks. They have never recovered this quickly, and you don't hear the blood dripping anymore. You don't hear it sizzle, and you look back down at my hand, and it is one hundred percent healed. No cut, no nothing. Ray, that's." I know you're worried, but that's remarkable. Um, <clears throat> look, I said it before, but I'm going to say it as many times as you need to hear it. Your blood doesn't make you who you are. What you do is what makes you who you are. And, and, and maybe to some extent how you think and, and what you believe. But the thing that people see of you is your actions. And um, I have to believe, I firmly believe that um it doesn't matter who you are it where you came from whether or not you've gone through some transformation and ended up with black blood you can be the person you want to be and okay look as, as far as i'm aware and mind you my research is spotty i don't have all the answers i have maybe more than some but i, I don't have them all um you are a half blood Nephilim and um, I don't think that they certain Neverborn had certain draws or needs and um, I don't know if it doesn't mean there aren't any but I don't know of any for Nephilim or, and, and less even so for a half blood okay but that doesn't change who you are there's always a way around it. There's always a way to to do what you think is right. So um I I know these changes are concerning. I can only imagine to to have the blood the way you do now that you didn't before, to go through this transformation and to see that things are still changing. But we're all um we're all getting stronger, different, growing. I I can I can summon things that I couldn't summon before. Um, I, I think it's just, you know, we're, we're doing a lot. We're doing a lot and we're using our skills a lot and, and it's like a muscle, you know, you, it grows when you stretch it. So um, don't, don't think this is some sort of damnation, Frey. You're not damned, you're not inherently evil because you have black blood. You're just Frey and, and it's the choices that you make that get to decide who Frey is.
Sorry, I um, I hope that's. No, I uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on you a lot to remind me that I am uh, happy to. I have spent every second since I got out trying to recover my humanity and uh this feels like a step in the wrong direction <laughs> no i mean <laughs> it's just a different okay i'll get what you mean i do humanity being human is okay sort of two things isn't it it's being a human in the literal sense of things being flesh and blood in the human-y kind of way. Okay, so yeah, human, right? You can look at it that way if you want. I don't think that'll do you any good And with what's going on with you, what's happened. Don't think of it like that. Don't try to get back there. Just be Frey, because you can be human in a different way. You can be the things that humanity regards. I mean, you're half human still. Okay. But you can hold up the morals that you think are right. You can be, you know, sympathetic to people you can love. You can care. Your blood doesn't change that. Okay. So just, just, you just have to shift your point of view a little bit because uh, what you are isn't important. Who you are is what's important and you're free. All right, I will. Uh, I'll remind myself of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, between you and me, although I think some other people parsed it, the ghosts, magic. <laughs> yeah. Me uh, kind of holds up the holds up the necklace. I mean to ask you about those. Are those your uh, friends, pets? No. I'm sorry, they died. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. They're, okay. Um, this thing, this thing grants me spells, power in a way, uh, like, you know, other, yeah, no, um, it's, um, I guess what I'm saying is there's weird stuff in this world that we don't entirely understand. And, um, sometimes you just figure it out and, and you work with it and, um, Sometimes it might seem scary, it uh, might, might seem like, you know, a bunch of banshees or something, but, um, you know, that's, there's a positive. I can use this to protect my friends. You can use your powers yeah. to do whatever you want, but I think I've started to get to know you well enough to, to, to believe that you're going to use them for good. Whatever that is, and whatever it means to you. Find out. There's uh, there's still some stuff I'm gonna be wrestling with, but if I got you around, I'll be. Yeah. I'll be better the way I uh, I thought I would be. So, very much appreciate it. And I'm happy to yell at you if you ever need it, but I'm you know. I will. I will for sure need that, and I very much appreciate it. <laughs> Sometimes to being me, a hard ass is the way to go. To me, you're just Frey. So, and I, th I think you're just Frey to everyone else too. I mean, I don't want to make that assumption, but I don't think your blood's what matters. So, um, I can't say don't worry about it because as much as I want to tell people not to worry about things, these are all things that should probably, that are perfectly normal to worry about. But, um, yeah, just... Trust us, we're not gonna... I mean, if you start doing something evil, someone's probably gonna call you out on it anyway. Yeah, I trust most of you. And I, I do enough. appreciate you. <laughs> All right. And, uh... Well. Yeah, I think we'll finish the walk-up. <laughs> Wherever that leads us. Well, you hopefully find a little park for Kelly to put her hooves in grass or something. Yeah, is is there a park nearby at all? 
Uh, the closest thing is there's a little bit of grass in the town square around the hanging tree. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hang out at the hanging tree. I guess. Yeah. We walk Callie around the hanging tree. <laughs> just don't don't mind the rope, girl. Just just enjoy the slightly grass. rotted corpses. Yeah, just yeah, all around fine. the hanging tree. It's just everything black, fine. nasty tree. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. All right, um, Ellie, where are you at? Ellie, over the course of the last couple of days, has been working and is in the gallows when Meave finds her. Um, Meave, you come walking downstairs. It's only, Ellie is the only one in the gallows at the time, but you can hear the bathroom door is shut, the sink is running, but you hear, higher, hold a higher, what are you doing? Ow, ow, shit, okay, higher. And you hear kind of a clang for a second. Ellie? What? Yeah, what? what? It's it's me. It's just me. You uh, all right? Uh, yeah, come on in for a second. Okay. Beef opens the door and does that. Ellie is shirtless with Kit standing below her, holding like thread and needle. And Ellie has this huge, like, gay gash across her chest, like, right above her, uh, kind of her abdomen. And she's stitching it shut. And you can see that she's like, yeah, hold it higher, Kit. I'm tugging on the thread too much. And Kit's just sort of holding the, the two uh, objects there for Ellie to use. Maybe's going to look at her and look at Kit and be like, all right, thank you, Kit. That's, you've been very helpful. And, and take the stuff no, no, from no, no, wait, Kit. Wait, wait. Mm, what? They need to learn. All right, so Kit, you need to stay here. We can't just tug the string all the time, all right? Maybe we can help Kit a little bit. All right, all right. Okay, Kit, um, yeah, so it's a little bit higher. All right, and uh, no, just, uh, okay. How about you watch this one and then, yeah, okay. And it's gonna uh, do a couple of stitches. Um, Kit, Kit and- is sad. Kit's, Kit's hand is going like a sewing needle about to just fucking sewing needle <laughs> Ellie shut. Oh god. Yeah, and Maeve is like um can you this is this is a human being. They have flesh yeah, can- and it hurts when you stab them, so you have to it just does. be a little careful. Just a, just a little bit just a little more gentle like like this you got to really um so like I don't really know how you work, but but just slower. Slower? Yeah, slower. And so Meeve is going to do a few stitches himself and be like, I actually, I mean, I I, uh, I was reading about stitching, actually, on the way back. Um, mm-hmm. Dr. Lee uh, lent me a few books. Um, and and there was a lot of really theoretical knowledge kind of about um, yep, I can tell. corpses. Mm. Corpses as well, if you, if you get my drift. Yep. And it's kind of, and it's, what happened? Is this from work? Marion White, Powder's Bird, had a knife, took care of it. <clears throat> Looks like he did. All right, all right, Kit. Now you try. Hands the needle back to Kit. Uh, Kit takes the needle, and it's like optical eye narrows as it looks at Ellie, very upset with how Ellie has been talking to it. And it just takes the needle and jabs Ellie in the leg. <laughs> Ow! I kicked it. <laughs> ah, shit! All right. <laughs> it, it, it does one of these and like throws the needle and thread up and just like hobbles out, door slams behind it and it goes back to work on the piano with a bar. We're not done, Kit. Oh, um, Meef picks it up, sterilizes the needle, goes, cheeky little shit, and, uh, goes back, just stand there, and goes back to stitching Ellie up. What's up? Uh, um, not much. Looks up, looks back down. Um, I had a favor to ask, uh, sort of a favor, well, more like a question-ish favor thing that you can choose whether or not you want to do. Um, I'll get you the money if you need the money. Is that what you need? No, money? No, I don't need money. Why would you think I need money? The stuff you did back in Innocence? Oh, no. 
absolutely not. Take me to lunch or something. I, that's not it at all. Come on. I don't. I. I. I write things, Ellie. I don't. I don't need your money. Stitching. All right. Um. Well. Pause. Nemo. Um. Nemo asked me. Hold on a sec. I'm just yeah, stitch, I'll stitch, and ties with, up. I. I'm still thinking about it. I'm gonna come to you soon. I know that Nemo brought that up. No, 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 no. The, I mean, yes, yes, but no. It ties ties off the uh, thing, snips, puts it down. Okay, I can focus on this. Um, Nemo asks, looks up, looks down, <clears throat> looks directly at Ellie's face. Ellie will Nemo... go and just put on a sh- her shirt. <laughs> uh, looking directly at Ellie's face. So Nemo asked um, if I could do a seance for her. Which, you know, she's alive, but she's not alive. She's dead, she's not dead. So I'm not sure if it'll work. Uh, but the long and short of it is um, they're stronger with people, other people, more people. I was wondering if you'd... Um... Yeah, I'm in. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. Um, I already let her know that um, she okay? it'd be better. Um... As okay as Nemo is right now, I mean, I don't know all of the things that's that are going on with her, but there's a lot of um, she's yeah. got a lot of feelings. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just. Um, are you okay? What? Yeah. No, I'm fine. I want. I want to help. I want to help her. I am. Um, you know, I'm. I'm a medium. Might as well use my powers for good. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm there. Tell me the day, time. I'll show up. Just one of the nights soon when we're all together. Um, we'll just do it in the evening. I'm going to set it up. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, tomorrow night, I think I've got almost everything I need. I can get the rest before then. So um, just be back here. Be home tomorrow night. Sounds good. And um, clean that out. I mean, not out, but like this, and just puts the puts like hydrogen yeah, peroxide on them. I know. Just don't let it get infected. It's the last thing you need right now. Yo, yep, I'm aware. Thanks, Neve. Uh, Sorry, that's. I mean. No, I. Yeah, it, it's welcome. Okay, Worry. good. Yeah. Did you send Kit back in here? Or what? Are you sure? Because he might just stab you again. Oh, we're going to have words. Oh, is that why I'm sending him back in? Yeah. Yeah. If Kit's going to be part of the the team, right, I need to see what Kit could do other than just stab me in the leg and try to backseat drive me like Nemo. And so far, Kit served really well holding my gun. So I want to see what else Kit can do. Okay. Well, I'll let him know then it. I'll let it know. Um, them? them i'll let them I know them. Sure. i'll let them know all right um yeah well uh see you later and um see you yeah bye and uh mave is gonna go on the way out be like kit ellie needs you please don't stab her again that was not entirely uncalled for but very rude with disgruntled right, whistles, <laughs> he, he comes back. <laughs> very, very angry. Uh, Ellie, you manage to keep a straight face and do a good job and ignore uh, just how soggy your socks are from uh, the blood that's pouring out from uh, when a few of your toenails fell off a couple days ago. Yeah. But Kit comes in uh, very sassy and whistling angrily at you. I want to say that K is exactly what Ellie said the first time she took her shoes off and saw her toenails were missing. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, we'll say uh, the week kind of comes to an end. It is the witching hour. 
and you guys have all gathered here for this seance. What does this seance look like, me? Right, um, so when everyone comes in, <laughs> when everyone comes in that, um, that evening, there is that steamer trunk uh, that's, that normally just has the book on it. The book's put on a bed somewhere. There is a cloth laid over the steamer trunk. Um, there are candles on all the corners, like, and there, oh, pardon me. And there are um, kind of an array of uh, like stones almost. They're not runes, they are like just pretty stones in a circle. Um, and so everything is pretty much set up um candles and then the pillows and things from the bed have been dropped around the steamer trunk in order to give people something to sit on um yeah and so um yeah so it's very um it's not super fancy but it's definitely spooky the lights are not on when you come in. Like, there's no other candles lit. Nothing else, no gas lamp, nothing like that. It's just the candles around the steamer trunk, the, um, the rocks, <laughs> and the cloth, which is a nice cloth. It's sort of almost a, a, like a velveteen or something. Um, and it's got uh, bits of wax on it. Like, this is not the first time it's been used. Um, and presumably Neva would be first in. Nemo sure. is very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Should um, I stand in the in the mi middle? Do I? <laughs> I can wear everything I'm wearing, and you're just fine the way you are. What I'm gonna have you do is, um, do you have something? And it's okay if you don't. I've got a backup plan. But do you have something that you've had, like, as long as you remember, like something that's yours? Um, and if not. It's okay. Um, we could just do a bit of your hair or something, but um, something, something yours. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Nemo is going to roll up her sleeve and uh, unclip. It's a very. <laughs> it looks like it's a necklace that she's wound around her wrist a couple of times to make it into a bracelet. It's a very mm -hmm. thin silver chain with a small charm of a crow on it that she always keeps tucked up okay. in her sleeve. Um, I mean, it's like... not legally, but... Right. The... That's okay, as long as you've had it, you know. As long as you can remember, and then we can presume that hopefully that means you had it when you were still alive. But it, we'll I definitely see. had it when I was still alive. Okay, then um, put it in the center of the circle, the the, the rock circle there. Uh, I promise it's safe. Uh, nothing will happen to it. I mean, I've never had like it's not like it's a sacrifice. This is just <laughs> the way to connect to you. It's um, what I would do if I didn't have someone here. And then we're gonna have you participate as if you're just a, a member of this seance. Um, so the rest of us are just going to sit around the trunk. So when you call for the spirit, you don't need to know then, like their name or what, what, how do you, uh, do you need something from me? Um, no, well, the, yeah, well, we've got the necklace, so, um, okay. we'll use that. Yeah, 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 okay. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll be purposefully vague. Well, I guess, uh, to a certain extent, we'll say to whom this, you know, necklace belongs to, that sort of thing. Will that, will that invite anyone else in that I should be aware of? Well, she shouldn't be dead. Uh, Good. Say the, the one that it belongs to, yeah. It's, belongs it, it to would, now, yeah. Okay. yeah. Great, yeah, we'll do that then. Um, don't Worry that I I will we'll do our best and we'll see what comes of it. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, I'll just sit, sit down. down then. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Again. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Thank. Yeah. Of course. 
Ellie's just and sitting silly. wide-eyed. And just sort of being like, all right, okay. Yeah, sits everyone down. And, um, all right. Great. Well then, let's get started. Um, a quick briefing. Uh, these sorts of things, I mean, obviously it helps to have someone who has um, the powers I do. But these sorts of things are about intent. So um, just focus your energy on Nemo. Um, don't try try not to let your mind wander too much i i um and just uh we're just gonna see what we can find out all right okay so um the other thing is um it's gonna reach out obviously nemo on one side of me so reach out for um nemo's hand and say we do well we don't have to hold hands but trust me it works better if everyone's connected so just um just join hands for me please Tobias will sit down next to Nemo. We, don't worry, Nemo. We got this. Take your hand. We will we'll figure, figure some good things out. Don't you worry. Okay. We'll, we'll take both Tobias's and, and Meeve's hands and is just staring at that little bracelet. Take mm -hmm. Tobias's hand and then Frey's hand. Which hand am I holding of Ellie? <laughs> mm, uh, right. Pneumatic or not pneumatic? Non pneumatic. Okay, cool. Uh, I take Ellie's clammy, sweaty hand. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the insult in. Um, <laughs> yep, grabs Frey's other hand um, and uh, doesn't say anything, but just squeezes Nemo's hand a little bit. All right. So everyone, go ahead and close your eyes. I want you to take a deep breath in for the count of four. And then I'd like you to hold it for four and then exhale for four. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And exhale, one, two, three, four. Now, if you feel you need additional grounding, continue to do that breathing exercise in your head. Just in for four, hold for four out for four all right good so i <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> all right ghost he's already here <laughs> um all right i'm going to ask you all to clear your mind make it as blank as you can and if you need something to focus on so that you are not allowing errant thoughts to jump in, focus on Nemo. Think of what she looks like. Think of her her hair color, her eyes. Um, while your eyes are closed, please do not stare at Nemo. That would be uncomfortable for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right, so keep your eyes closed now. In and out. Your body is a channel for the energy that we need to summon the spirit in which we wish to communicate with. I am opening the door for a specific person and one person only. The person who is the current owner of the necklace in the center. Please come forth. If you can, we would like to communicate with you. Someone here in the circle has questions for you. If you are there, please give us a sign. There's a few moments of calmness and the candles slightly flicker uh, nothing nothing too big just a almost like a breeze moved through I don't know maybe someone moved quickly maybe they didn't I believe we may have a presence here I will also open the door to any 
positive and friendly entities that wish anyone no harm that may have information on the person who currently owns the necklace in the center. You may not enter this circle or speak with us if you intend any harm, and when you are finished communicating, you must return to where you came from. Now, I did see a candle flicker. If there is someone here with us, could you make that candle flicker again? Uh, one of the candles goes out. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. And I'm just going to... Okay, that's fine. Good. So, if the rest of you could keep your eyes closed and focus. Nemo, if you would open your eyes. If you have a question... You may ask whoever is here with us, and we'll see if they can answer. I normally am able to get words or um, feelings, but it might be better to start with a yes or no answer so that they can use the candle to communicate while they draw from our energy. Yes or no? Okay. Yeah, I have my yes or no question. Um... I guess this isn't, um, I kind of, was it the punishment that did it? Is that why I am um, this, is that how I died? It was the punishment, right? Uh, if the answer is yes, please make something happen. Nothing happens. All right, I've, we have heard you, thank you. If the answer is no, could you please make a candle flicker? Me, with you only having eyes open, uh, the shadow behind Nemo begins to grow long and it creeps up the wall and up towards the ceiling. Okay. Meev sees that, notes that, looks at Nemo, looks up. If there is someone here that is able to send me a message, I can relay it to Nemo. I will I will open my my mind to receive this message if there is anything that you can tell me. And Meeve is going to sit in silence for a moment to see if this, whatever they're communicating with, can give answers. The shadow begins to look much less like Nemo and more like a very tall, lanky man in a top hat. Nemo is, or Nemo is facing the table, so presumably doesn't see that. But Meve does, but doesn't say anything right now. Just <clears throat> okay. all right. Um, I understand there is someone here with us who does not presently wish anyone harm. Wishes only to communicate. If you have a message for Nemo. Please, once again, flicker a candle, put one out, move one of the stones from my circle, and turn a light on, whatever suits you. Nemo, can I get you to make a target number 12 non-cheatable? Um... I fully don't have the deck out, if somebody could flip for Got me. Got it, I'm on it. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Uh, willpower save. Willpower save. Uh, yeah, as I absolutely can do that. You got a 13 on the card. Woo! Awesome, so that's a 17. Um, uh, if this creature intends to do harm to me, they automatically take two points of damage. They don't intend to do harm to you. 
Yay. Cool. Uh, you do feel a... You feel that cold chill run up the back of your spine. As uh, me, you see the hand of the shadow comes out of the wall and it materializes, elongates and stretches until it is hanging over Nemo's hand in long tendrils, almost like puppet strings, just gently fall onto her wrist. Uh, Nemo, you feel not alone. You feel that something is here. You feel a presence, I guess you could say, in the seance. And it wishes you to release your hand and place it palm up in the center of the table. I should let it in, right? If, uh, if you are getting a feeling, Nemo, follow your gut. We've made a safe circle. You should be all right. Nemo is going to let go of Meeve's hand and still hold on to Tobias's hand and mm -hmm. and and put palm up under the. You feel guided, like like a like a gentle touch, sort of softly moving your hand, and your hand falls palm up. Um, your fingers twitch expectantly. As if something is wanted. Uh, me being more in tune with the spiritual essence of ghost and spiritual or not. You, you think that it, it, it wants something. Um, Nemo, it's, um, it's asking for something. It, it wants something. I don't know what. Um, I'm just getting the feeling that the presence here with us wants something. Do you have any ideas? I was going to go down into her pocket and get out her journal and whatever pen that she has. If this presence is the one that she thinks it might be, he likes to write. All right, put that, um, put that out there. Maybe that will, uh, Help? She puts it out, and if... Is there a response to that, or...? Is there a pen? I no longer have the pen that wrote by itself. Not the pen, just okay. a pen. I've got a regular pen, yeah. Uh, the pen stands up to attention. Oh, all right, good. Um, if you're, if you have something to communicate with us, please um, feel free to use the pen and paper provided. Nothing happens. Hmm. It waits oh. for a question. All right, um, Nemo. Um, why don't you try to uh, ask it a question? And uh, if that doesn't work, then one of us can um, command the pen. It's, it's scry, uh, scry sort of, but I uh, will. It's it's um, it looks ready. So uh, why don't you give it a shot? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, and I'll I'll say a question, and then if it's a, if it's a terrible qu if the, if it doesn't work, then you can tell me, and then I'll, I won't waste. Uh, yeah, um, so um, I can't remember when I last saw him but I know he's in a bad way now and I, I I would like to know when I last saw Sam Sam Samson um, when, when what happened uh, the pin quickly moves in jams into Nemo's hand. Oh. Uh, 
when that does, the journal flutters open and it pulls back uh, a bit of blood hanging off her hand. Uh, there's a wince of pain, Nemo, and it begins to hurriedly scribe along the page. Uh, hunting we will go, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Canes, lions, beaten, beaten. Okay, so he was there. How long? How long ago was this? Um, being out of ink, it again jabs back into your hand. Um, more pages flip, and it begins to write again. Uh, you can see, me that the shadow is taking a three-dimensional shape as it is pulling out of the wall the chalky pale faced tall man uh, with a smile where the lips pull back far behind the gums and it's just grinning through these reflected spectacles and it's writing quickly and it's uh it says um 15 over and over 15, 15, 15. Nemo. And then it says, okay. beware of the hunger. Nemo, um, I, um, I think, I think I, I have um, the energy to, to, to support one more question. Um, so. Yeah, of course. Is it, uh, if uh, you can ask anything you want, no, no, um, no, this is you. If you have anything else, um, now's the time. Are you sure? Like, you said this was a weird circumstance if you wanted to. Thank you, but um, this is, I'm learning enough. I'm learning enough without, uh, I don't have any, please. Um, um, this is for you. And I wish I could give you more. Who or what, if it if it has a name or whatever, um, something made me come back. Do you know what it is or what it was or who or? Um, the pin falls next to the book. The last thing. It wrote, beware of the hunger. Um, the shadowy tendrils pull around the fingers and you are forced to squeeze your hand. And as you do, blood just sort of slowly trickles out the side and something physical manifests within your hand. And when you open it back up, there it almost looks like a like a key fob like a like a tag that belongs on the end of a key and it says 212 uh meve you watch the shadow pull back into the wall all of the candles flicker out and three words whisper like a hiss it was me Thank you to everyone for your energy. Uh, if anyone has visited us tonight, and for those who have visited us tonight, we ask that you leave this room and you leave us in peace, returning to wherever you came from. Thank you for your own energy and your information. We will do our best to use it well. I am now closing the circle. So please, if there's anyone else with us, please, please leave. If everyone could do our breathing exercise again, it is in for four, hold and out for four. So one, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, 
and you may let go. The circle is broken. And um, Neve is kind of gonna, and just kind of, and just falls back, falls asleep. Not nothing bad, just fucking collapses. Nemo, Nemo is automatically just going to check to make sure that Meve is asleep and not. There's a pulse. Not, <laughs> yeah. There's breath. <laughs> Nemo is also not letting go of Tobias's hand while while she does this, but just checking. What did it? Uh, what what happened? What did it write? I heard I heard the pen scratching. I heard the voices. Or the voice. It's hard to, um, we should, uh, thank you all for all of your help. We should get me off the floor, I think, after what they've, you know, um, I can't lift me. I'm very, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I just, I pick me up and put her on a bed. Me just kind of like gonna open eyes and be like, oh, thank you. I'm just going <laughs> to sleep when they're put on a bed. So, what was it, Nemo? Well, um, my, um, my nighttime friend, my, um, uh, you've seen him, Frey, so how great he's kind of like, um, he's, uh, I guess he's a necromancer or, or, you know, a resurrectionist or whatever, um, so that's, that's why I'm like this, so that's, that's good and useful to know, and, um, I'll explain why I don't find him, uh, why well, I feel like he's, you know, a kind of safe person. Um, uh, I've been dead for 15 years, so that's... I thought it was going to be a lot longer, so overall, learning good things. So what what, what does he want with you? Why did he... Why? Why? I don't know. It doesn't matter. He'll let me know. I mean, it, it matters. If, if, you, if you got some great fate or something, you know, it matters. He says, um, he's told me that um, I'm going to, I'll be fine. Uh, he's, he's been communicating. He hasn't told me what to do or anything. It's not like I've been taking orders from somebody and not telling you all. He's just been, sometimes he just lets me know, uh, you know, you're not, you're going to set foot down a dark path or you're going to trade your life for a soul. And I don't know what any of it means, but he does tell me things like that sometimes. So, so if he does give you orders, are you going to follow him? Like, do you, do you want to be told what to do by this guy? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to hurt, and I'm not going to hurt any of you. So, I won't ever do that. Yeah. All right. When 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 it comes down to it, we'll we'll help you figure this out, Nemo. If if, if whoever this guy is, your nighttime friend, if he's dangerous or if he's uh, he's not he's not dangerous to me, and I won't let him be dangerous to you. So you don't have to worry about it. Thank you all so much for everything for being here. It's yeah. it's, it's it's all right, Nemo. We'll we'll, we'll get it figured out. He's gonna try to put his arm around her if she'll if she'll take it. She'll let you do that, but it's very one-sided. She's like just staring at the trunk still. We're we're still here too, so just call her if you need anything. Thank you. I'm sorry for um. No. Uh, thank you. Whew. Okay. Um, we should check on. We should check on. We should check on Meeve and make sure, you know, this isn't like a... They were taken by grave spirits or something like that. Why don't... Why don't, why don't all of you go look at me for a little while? I have to go to the bathroom, actually, I think. All yeah, right, we, go. We bustle over, wake up Meeve. Uh, Meeve, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meeve's kind of po- prodded or shaken awake. Meeve kind of rolls over and goes, huh? Oh, Hello. Yeah, sorry. I uh, didn't mean to. I hope I didn't frighten anyone. Just got uh, it was that was. Wow. Okay. That was that was some scary shit indeed. Uh, yeah. I I feel like it helped her out, so we appreciate it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, there's um, someone uh, looking out for her or something. I don't know if looking out is the right word, but uh, they, they're they really, they've got a lot of, they've got a strong presence. Oh, and me will kind of like try and slow this up. You, you need a cracker or something? Should we get you something to eat? <laughs> How does this all work? I'll be fine. I'll be, uh, water, water would be good if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Water. I don't know if water's in the room, but I go get water. <laughs> you head to the bar, get, get water. Yeah. You could go get a glass from the bathroom, but Nemo has locked herself in the bathroom. Nah. <laughs> bar, the bar's, bar's fine. Bar. Bar's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Once folks settle back in, Ellie uh, is sitting on one of the beds. Right. And she goes, Nemo, can you hear me? So? Not, all right. I was going to say not twice if you could hear me, if you didn't want to say anything, but fine. You hear two knocks at the door. <laughs> Thank you. I've been thinking about this for a bit. I think uh, we have a lot to deal with coming up, and I decided now is a good time as any to share with all of you that I'm not doing well. If Nemo's going to share secrets in a seance, I suppose I should probably share secrets without being forced into a weird circle full of breathing exercises. What's so, that? I'm not certain exactly what is happening other than I and I reach up and I pull out a tuft of hair. This really bothers me, by the way. I think something's happening to me based upon necessities and desires. Do, do we got to go back and get that looked at? Or how are we going to fix this? <laughs> Ellie pulls up the gun from necessities and desires. Yeah, we should probably go and look. I was just going to tell Meve, but I could use everybody's help, including you, Nemo. Who knocks at the door? Into this situation. Ellie takes off her boots where the bloodstained socks are. <laughs> Nemo, er, um, Nemo. Can you hand the hydrogen peroxide out from the bathroom? Oh, I got that. Kit! <sighs> Kit! And Kit comes waddling around a corner with some hydrogen peroxide and is like, yes. All right, don't stab anyone this time, Kit. It says doesn't Neve. give it to you. It puts <laughs> it on the counter and claps back. <laughs> Thank you, Kit. Progress. Anyway. <laughs> Um, you might make beeps. friends after all. <laughs> I didn't want to bring this up. I didn't want to impose too much, but I think I'm running out of time. And if we get in another fight, I can't knock people out anymore. I barely made it out of the last one. So, I need your help. Yeah, you got it. First yeah. things first, uh, can we get your feet up? And I start stacking pillows on the end of the I, bed. I wouldn't really touch them. I'm not touching your feet. That's disgusting and horrible. I am putting pillows okay. on the end of the bed. All right. I was looking for a little bit more there. Fine. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's a good place to end it. Right there. Tending to, to Ellie's messed up self. Everything. Everything. Yeah, at this point. Yeah, we'll uh, pick back up and decide what to do with uh, Ellie and necessities and desires and how Nemo handles the sounds. Got your back, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we help Nemo out. We'll help you out. Do whatever you need. We are. Cow. 
All right, so uh, fantastic session, everyone. Uh, I'm a little creeped out. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, okay, so here's what happened. Like, we're over here doing a seance. It's crazy and it's weird. And then, like, CJ's mic acts up, and then like computer sounds start going off, and like I don't know where they're coming from, and like. I don't know. We're just having a seance. Everything's supposed to be normal. Then we have technical issues. And like the music cuts out and I'm just I'm just not here for it. Like I don't just like it. Town. Don't like oh, it. There's, there's something Sorry, Sorry guys. I meant <laughs> like, for it to be fictional. The RP Ooh. just got too real for just a moment for me. Um that's fine. But that's okay. That's okay. I'll just not sleep ever. So it's fine. Um <laughs> Too much but real life experience, my too, bad. Too much, too much. Um, <laughs> shout out, shout out to all of you in the cast. Thank you so much for a wonderful session this evening. Thank you for your efforts, uh, and thank you to all of you uh, in the chat who have joined us and and uh, joined us in this adventure this evening. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I do have some people who have followed us that we want to shout out since yesterday. Again, uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us uh, coming over from the Weird giveaway. Well, we cannot be thankful enough to Weird, who has created this wonderful world that the players um, are utilizing to bring this experience to you right now. So shout out to them. Um, shout out to... Hold on, this kid, this. Hold on, let me go get the list. Because it's just, it's just such a list. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm Got just going to... People again. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to go from uh, I'm going to go from the ones that are, with, are within 24 hours, right? So it's Charmandler 1, The Lost Hue, uh, Bio McCall, K2 Vasate, Don Perdon, uh, Empress in Yellow, Despotic Panda 70, uh, she Shinale, Cortland 92, Oz Sharky, Cruel the Mad, Three Game Tears, uh, Sir Coach, Lunda Nadine, uh, Le Bog, Angry Bogey, <laughs> uh, Mini Mini Teleperkinis. <laughs> I don't know how this one <laughs> goes. Uh, so <laughs> Tad Kellison, 1963, <laughs> just first name, last name, birth year. Oh, yeah. um, Jubilee the Silent, Bard Lock 22, uh, Dave Gots You. Uh, Valderin 987, Wed Zerone, My Celonius, uh, Microfiber for you, Pandora's, Pandora's Otter, uh, Herodil, uh, Patient Brewmaster, Pubby Leo, uh, Adam Plaz 123, Dark Plane, Wood Elf Widower. That's ed edgy. Edgy. <laughs> uh, the uh, the Nysagam. Um, Greed one one oh seven, uh, Dree PH, uh, Dapper Gent with the sub, Halas thirteen G's, um, Panda Juice Gaming with the sub with Prime, uh, Ecubate, uh, BFM nineteen ninety two, and Untamed Painter. All these fantastic followers. Um, thank you all so much for joining us here in our little Ink and Lyre community. Uh, we cannot thank you so much for enough for joining us uh, here. Um, the best thing that you can do for the channel if you want to continue to support us is, of course, watch and enjoy the shows, but also share us on all your socials if you can and tell your friends about us. It's the best thing that you can do for us here. And, of course, you can always subscribe with Prime or with your uh, regular subscriptions. That helps us produce this show and do the things that we're doing. So shout out to all of you. Shout out to the cast. Uh, thank you to Nine Realms Gaming, our partner for the evening. And uh, we you will find you can find us here next tomorrow at next seven tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, <laughs> 730 Central <laughs> Standard Time, uh, for Iron Valor as we are entering into Ravenloft Castle. Um, and not under not under good circumstances. Um, the party has been very rude to Strahd. Can't imagine why. And dare they. Uh, how dare they. And so you could see a TVK. I don't know. We'll be here tomorrow at 7.30. since interesting time. Friday is short rest. You can find Christian and some of the cast from Fate's End over there. They're going to be playing some League of Legends. And then uh, Mondays we have um, Fate's End, which is a homebrew 5e campaign that we have. That is at 7.30 Central Standard Time. Thank you everyone for joining us. We're going to send you on a raid to someone within the tabletop RPG community. 
And uh, when you get there, show them the love. Drop the huzzah mugs, the red jokers in their chat. Let them know that Ink and Liar sent you. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful evening. Thanks, all. Bye. See ya. We love ya. Bye.